whatever you got. Whatever you got. Can you imagine pounding his friends, pounding on top of yeah. their hands a blood? But every time they pound, they kept saying, I'm not going to leave until my friend can walk. Every time they were fighting and spitting shingles everywhere, he said, I'm not going to leave until I walk. Yeah. So what are you saying, Bishop? If something don't work, use what you got. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Those issues are staff. Yes. Samson, you the job on or don't get? Yeah. What is it that you have? Come on, come on. Come Maximize on. that gift. Come on. Come to the on. potential that is given you. Yeah. Maximize it. Yeah. Hey, this is Bishop George Johnson Jr. A couple of weeks ago, I ministered a powerful message titled Unstoppable. It came from Mark chapter 2, a story of a paralyzed man that got four of his friends to carry him to see Jesus. When they got there, they could not get near Jesus because there was no room. Every entrance was blocked, but they refused to be stopped. They became unstoppable. To make a long story short, Jesus healed the man, told him to take up his bed and walk. You know, as you're going after your goal, after your dream, after your vision, there will be times when you're right there close to it, and it seems like every barrier is trying to stop you from making the next step. You have to take the mindset of this paralyzed man and be unstoppable. You can't let anything stop you from getting to the thing that you know God has for you. I pray that this message is a blessing for you. Just listen to it. I'm giving you five keys on how to be unstoppable. Now, I, I can talk well, and I'm a great relationship builder. I can do that. So what I was doing, building all kinds of relationships. Yeah. Yeah. That's my gifting. Use your, what is your, what is the thing that you know you can do? It ain't nobody good at doing it but you. Yeah. You know without a doubt in your mind, this is the reason why God placed me on this planet. That's the gift. That's the key that's going to unlock the door. Yeah. And then number four, be unstoppable. Yeah. Be unstoppable. Yeah. Be unstoppable. Yeah. They tore a hole in the roof. Let the man down in front of Jesus. As he was laying there in front of Jesus, they asked, Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. I bet they probably said, that's nice. Jesus, that's wonderful. But I could have stayed in the parking lot and got my sins forgiven. Yeah. All I had to do was bring out the price and say, repeat after me. I could have yeah. just repeated after you. I didn't come for that. Yes. I came to walk. Yeah. And I don't care who's in the way. People were in the crowd murmuring and talking. People were complaining. All the things he had to overcome. Some of us probably would have just got up or just said, okay, that's it. He said he forgive us. Go on, take me on home. No, I didn't come here for that. Yes. I came to walk. Yes. And I don't care if I got to stay here and lay here in front of Jesus till he give the benediction and open up service tomorrow, but I'm not going to leave here until I walk. What is it that you want? <laughs> what is it that you desire? What is it that you desire? You have to be unstoppable. Yes. And let me go ahead and put a, a tear the fallacy down. I used to have a friend of mine, he would tell me sometimes, well, how do I know it's God? And, how do I know it's me and how do I know it's this? If the thing will never go away. Same thing like Diane Nyad. It will never go away in her 30s. Even though she failed again and again and again. Even though she failed in the dream, the vision, the passion. It will never go away. It will never sleep. It will never die. Yes. And at the age of 60, she said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I want to close with a story. There was a young girl who was raised by her grandmother. She was about five or six years old, like my children. And her grandmother said, come on in here, baby, help me make a cake. So they began to put the cake together. And the grandmother tells her, baby, you see, it's flat now. She said, but this cake is going to rise and be a big <coughs> The little girl was so excited. They put the cake together. They put the cake in the oven. The little girl ran to the oven one. She said, grandma, grandma, what's so wrong with this cake? She said, what's wrong with it, baby? She said, it's not rising. Her mama said, baby, don't worry. It's going to rise. Little girl went in there, just like my little kids, ran back in there five minutes later, looked at the mother and said, grandma, grandma, something wrong with this cake. 
It's still flat. It's not rising. Grandmama told her, baby, don't worry. It's going to rise. Little girl, like my children, forgot. When an hour later, she looked at her and she said, oh, Grandmama, the cake is rising. The grandma said, baby, I know. She took the cake out, let it cool. They began to put icing on it. They put icing on it. The little girl asked her grandma, she said, Grandmama, how did you know the cake was going to rise? She said, because baby, I put something in it to make it rise. All right. So all right. I'm saying, I'm telling you, yeah. how do you know you're going to rise? Because our creator has put something yes. in you yes. to yes. make you rise. Yes. He put something in you. I don't care what you think. I don't care what the rejection yes. is. Yes. I don't care who walked out. I don't care who told you it's not yes. going to rise. Yes. There's something in you yes. Yes. that he's put in you. You're going to rise. Yes. You're going to come out of this. Amen. Hey, this is Bishop George Johnson, Jr. I pray that that message was a blessing for you. You know, when you're going after your goal and after your dream, after the vision, you know, the thing that you know that you were placed on this planet to do, you have to be unstoppable. You have to apply these five things. Number one, you got to learn how to match the intensity of the challenge. Some people don't do that. The challenge is here and they're continuing to operate here. Always remember, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. If you want something different, you got to know how to match that intensity. Just take it up one more level and then things will begin to happen. Number two, you got to learn how to fight, man. I mean, you got to fight to the point that you are crazy. People think that you're crazy and people are going to call you all types of things, but you have to be willing to fight the crowd, fight folk, fight opinions to go after the thing that you know that you place on this earth to do. Number three, you have to be innovative. That's the most important one. Most people in that crowd, they only saw possibly three entrances, windows, a front door, and a back door. But they saw another way. They said, we're going to go on top of this house, and we're going to tear a hole in the roof. Can you imagine that? They tore a hole in the roof to get down to where Jesus was. Number four, you got to use what you got. Use what's in your hands. Stop looking on the outside for people to help you and all those types of things. Let me tell you something. They're not going to help you. You have to go after it with everything, every fiber of your being to get the thing that you know that God has placed you on this earth to do. They begin to beat and tear a hole in the roof. And I always tell this joke, I said, I bet you any kind of money, they probably laid that uh, lame man down and he began to bite a hole through the shingles or whatever they had during that particular time. I use shingles because that's what we have today. I don't know what they had back then. We probably had brick and mortar, whatever they had. But he began to use whatever he had. And that was his mouth. And he began to bite a hole in the roof. And they began to pound and pound until they got a hole large enough to let a person down in front of Jesus. What is it that you have in your hand? What is it? What is the gift and the talent? The one thing that you know you have in your hand, you got to use that to go after the thing that you know God has called you to do. The last one, you got to be relentless. You got to have the mindset, I won't be moved until I get the thing that I know God has called me to do. You have to go after it with everything in you and you have to be relentless. The point that you have to wrestle until the thing gets tired and then it just gives way to you. You have to fight it and fight it and fight it. You have to learn how to be unstoppable. Man, I love preaching that message. I pray it was a blessing for you. Before I close this thing, I want to just ask you a question because all of that is fine. But one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible says, what profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Let me ask you a question, a very serious question. If your heart was to stop beating right now, where would you spend eternity? A while ago, before I came on this broadcast, I was just talking to my son. He was telling me about a 20-year-old actor that just lost his life. He said he went to sleep and then get back up again. Let me ask you a question. What if that was you? Where would you open your eyes next? I don't care what people are talking. I know a whole lot of people are saying different things. But let me tell you something. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. I don't care what is this new age teaching. I'm telling you, hell 
is a real place. And if you die without Jesus, that's where you'll go. It's not hard. It's just four steps. Number one, you got to repent. Repent is just a big old religious word that simply means to just change your mind. That's all. You were saying I was going down this way, but now I realize that's the wrong direction. I need to change my mind. I need to change direction on where I'm going. So you got to repent. Number one, you got to believe. The Bible says you got to believe on something that's bigger than you. You got to believe in Jesus' birth, Jesus' life, Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. Believe on something. Take your life and put it in something that's bigger than you. Number three, all you got to do is call. The Bible says those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the last one is just the easiest one. All you got to do is just open up your mouth and confess. Just confess him as Lord of your life. If you do those four things, you are saved. Now notice I didn't say a whole lot of things. I didn't say abstinence. I didn't say, you know, I'm going to start going to church. And I didn't say, you know, I'm going to start treating everybody around. I didn't say I'm going to start paying my tithes and paying my offerings. You can do all of those things. But if you haven't done those four things, you will be eternally lost. So let's repeat after me. It's very simple. Just say, Lord Jesus. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Save me. I believe that you came to this earth to die for me. I believe that. So now, God, come into my heart. Save me. Save me now. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And today, I confess you as Lord of my life. If you did that for the very first time, congratulations. Welcome to the kingdom of God. You are now saved. You are now a Christ follower. You are now a Christian. Congratulations. That was the most important decision that you can ever make. Let me ask you another question. If you don't have a church home, my wife and I, we would love to be your pastors. We only meet once a month right now. We believe in God for more services, but right now we only meet once a month. That's every third Sunday at the La Quinta Inn and Suites in McDonough, Georgia. The address is 100 Mill Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. Again, that's 100 Mill Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. We meet at the La Quinta Inn and Suites, and we only meet once a month now at 11 o'clock. I had a young lady walk up to me. She said, you gave a wonderful message, and you put it on, but you didn't tell us the time. We meet at 11 o'clock every third Sunday of the month. We meet at 11 o'clock at La Quinta Inn and Suites in McDonough, Georgia. Again, the address is 100 Mill Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. My wife and I would love for you to come and be a part of what we know. We have a growing ministry here, and we believe that God will change your life. Come to the Success Nation, where we teach you how to live your dream and step into your purpose. God bless you, and we'll see you on the